Okay, guys, this is uh, slide 10, our last slide in the uh, 1970s decade. Uh, and it's on technology in the 70s. Not a real long slide. Shouldn't, uh, shouldn't take very long to get through anyway. But uh, let's go ahead and get started. Let's see. We have space, the final frontier. No, sorry, that's my Star Trek impersonation there. Anyway, let's talk about space uh, in the 70s. We've won the space race, we got to the moon, so what's next? Next is something called Skylab. In 1973, the United States would send the first space station here, the first U.S. space station, sorry, um, into orbit in 1973. It was known as Skylab, and here you see a picture of Skylab there. These are uh, solar panels on the side and the top. It's not a helicopter. It just Those are solar panels. Um, but Skylab would orbit Earth for a number of years. Uh, in 1975, we see a historic first. Uh, in 75, U.S. astronauts and Soviet cosmonauts uh, met and worked together on board uh, Skylab. So this was a, uh, a, a very big deal. Because, you know, these two, in 75, they're still Cold War enemies, but uh, have reached an agreement that space should not be the next battleground. Uh, we're going to work together on that. The next step for U.S. space would be unmanned exploration. Uh, NASA would start launching unmanned missions to explore other planets in our solar system. Um, unmanned missions to Mars. Uh, would be the first ones, uh, and then uh, Venus after that. So um, unmanned exploration would be the next great step, and sort of still is today. Okay. All right, let's talk about uh, computers here. The 70s will see the beginnings um, of computers. In 1973, Xerox would build the first personal computer, 1973 Xerox, but the problem is it's extremely expensive and not many people can afford it. Um, in 1977, that all changes. Okay. In 1977, Apple computers would be founded um, by two college dropouts named Steve, Steve Jobs and Steve Wozniak. And here you see their picture down here in the bottom. And this was their creation. This is the first Apple home computer uh, as a giant monitor, a big old keyboard. This is an external disk drive, um, which ran on five and a quarter inch floppy disks. They were bendable. Uh, and you would put your disk into there and it would read the program onto your computer. Okay. Uh, that would be the first successful Apple home computer. Uh, weighed 12 pounds, if you're keeping score at home there. Um, once Apple comes out, other companies, such as IBM, will get involved. And that brings into our discussion a very well-known name nowadays, Bill Gates. Okay. Bill Gates would develop DOS for IBM. It stands for Disk operating system. It's the it's what the program that runs the computer. MS-DOS, Microsoft DOS. Uh, he would develop that for IBM. But IBM fails to copyright <laughs> DOS. So that leads to IBM compatible companies popping up everywhere like Compaq or Texas Instruments okay? uh, that hurt IBM. So Gates will next negotiate with IBM to develop a graphics-based system that used a mouse. Okay. Um, the early computers didn't have a mouse. Every time you wanted the computer to do something, you had to type in a command to tell it to run a particular program. Okay. Um, Apple was the first to develop a mouse. And that was the one big advantage they had. Now, Gates has developed an operating system for IBM 
that uses a mouse. So Gates will doom Apple computers because the one big advantage they had, Bill Gates takes and hands to IBM. So he has helped IBM succeed, and he's doomed Apple to failure. So we think. Okay. Now, um, Gates will go on, and we're getting a little ahead of ourselves here, but that's okay. Gates will go on and develop Windows operating system. It will replace DOS. But he doesn't just sell it to IBM. He sells it to all the IBM-compatible computers as well. So now, Apple runs its own operating system, and every other computer company out there runs Windows. So Gates will doom both Apple and IBM in the long run. Uh, and we'll still be talking about Gates in the 80s and 90s. This is just the beginning for him. Okay. So let's finish up our decade here by talking about some fun stuff. Video games. Okay. In 1975, Atari will develop the first video game, Pong. You essentially play ping pong. Uh, in 1975. Now, that's the, the home version. Before we get to that, we get the arcade version, which you see standing up here. This is a picture of the first Pong machine. It was basically a TV that sat inside a big wooden cabinet with a little coin slot here and two knobs to play. You're basically playing ping pong. Here's a picture. Okay, um, The little ball, or for lack of a better term, is that square right there. You had two paddles, one on each side. And the idea was to hit the paddle, or hit the ball, with your paddle. And if your opponent missed, you got a point. It was ping pong, back and forth. Um, and it went pretty slow, and the longer the volley would start, slow. And it made this great sound. Every time the ball hit the paddle, it would go boop, 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 boop. And the longer the, the volley went, the rally, the faster the ball moved. So it would go boop. until somebody missed. And then you started over, the next point. Uh, and it was pretty exciting. This was, uh, it, it, this was the first video game ever, was this, what you're looking at right here. So the games you're playing now started right here. Um, a guy named Nolan Bushnell, Nolan Bushnell, interesting name, uh, founded Atari. And he puts this Pong game into a bar in California. Uh, called Andy Caps. You don't have to know that, but that's the name of the bar. Um, and the reasoning was, they figured, well, what game should we invent? And he said, it's got to be something simple enough that any drunk in a bar can play it. And this was about it. Right? So this was Pong. Now, in 1975, Atari comes out with a home version that looks like this. This was the console. Right? My sister and I had one of these. for uh, We got one for Christmas, 1975. That was the new hot gift. Um, and there you see the cord kind of right here. Uh, you plugged it into your TV, okay? and these were two paddles. Right? And you could lift this little this silver here. You could lift that little silver thing out, and it had a long cord connecting it to the base. And you'd go sit on your couch or recliner or whatever, and it had a knob. And if you turned the knob to the right, your paddle went down. And if you turned it to the left, your paddle went up. And that was pretty cool. Uh, that, that was damned exciting back in 1975. And this ball went boop, 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 back and forth. Uh, and my sister and I would sit for hours in front of a TV playing Pong. Uh, it was fascinating. But if you just imagine, everything you're playing now, your, your, your role-playing games, everything, started with this arcade machine right there. Okay, so much for the 70s. We will get into uh, the 1980s next as we make our way to the end of the year.